and Marika Steemach discuss Marika's book, Keys to Financial Confidence. Marika, how are you? Great. How are you, David? I'm doing very good. You know, we were just talking. I didn't get a chance to ask you. I'm actually currently sitting in Florida, in Ocala, Florida, which is uh, they call the Kentucky of the South. Where are you sitting? Oh, I'm in rainy Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. So oh, beautiful. we are not having the best weather lately. I don't know what is going on, but. This is where I'm at. Well, I've got news for you. I don't want to be the one to break this to you, but it's called Canada for a reason, right? I, I think usually I, the joke I heard is if you don't like the weather in Canada, wait 10 minutes. <laughs> yeah. Close, right? Oh, my gosh. I don't know. <laughs> All right, Marika. Well, well, we are talking because on top of your many other talents, you have written a book. Yes. What is it called? So my book is called Keys to Financial Confidence, Unlock Your Best Life. It's a coaching book. It's a book where you get to coach yourself into figuring out what it is that you want with your life, like what exactly do you want, and how to make sure you have the financial means to get there. Wow. Now, is it, is it predictive at all? I checked the stock market before we, uh, before we uh, came on and <laughs> no. uh, the stock market is not, I don't know that'd be in your book or not like, you know, page 72, see what the stock market is doing. No, it's not, not that kind of financial financial, is it? No, it's not that kind of financial book. It's more of a self-help book. So okay. it's more of you digging a little bit deeper and understanding why you feel the way you do about money, what you want your money to do for you. What is the purpose of money for you? What's your money story, you know, and then you'll, you'll get simple solutions on like how to conquer debt, you know, how to overcome some sort of like financial, financially negative mindsets. And there's, there's just a bunch of keys is what I call them to, you know, unlocking great opportunities. If you just sort of like take the initiative, work through the questions and do the tasks that I ask you to do. Now. <laughs> Is, is this a field that you are an expert in? I mean, did, did this, how did this book come about? I guess would be a better way to ask that. Good question. So um, I was a hairstylist for 22 years and it got to the point where I recognized, well, first I should say I was a hairstylist and then throughout the pandemic, you know, I was no longer on the floor right. because, you know, we were at a standstill so many times here in Canada, especially. So I, I just decided to become a life coach. I was like, this is what I've been doing all along anyways for 22 <laughs> years, right? Listening to people, asking them questions. Yeah. And, you know, when I went through my certification, I noticed more and more people can't actually do what they want if they don't have the financial means. So yeah. that's what's holding them back. So I decided to do a little bit of research. I've always had a healthy relationship with money. And uh, I've always been asked, like, how am I able to do certain things? So I just decided to put it all together in a cute little book and present it to the world. And hopefully yeah. it'll help people out. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So, so, um, I, I, so there, there, was, there was two days in your life. There was the day before you actually started writing this book. And then there was the day after or the day of the day you started writing this book. What, 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 walk me through how that happened and then how you kind of structured yourself to be able to put a book together. Well, I'll be honest. Initially, it wasn't supposed to be a book. It was just going to be a challenge. I wanted to present a 40 day challenge. So what, and this was going to be connected to my coaching business. And um, what ended up happening is I started just writing out each chapter title onto post-it notes and um, arranging them in a sequence that I believed was necessary in order to, you know, have the correct flow. And then all of a sudden, you know, I had all these little sticky notes on a mirror in my bedroom and I started doing a little write up for each challenge and then it just turned into something more. I was like, this is a book. This is not just a little challenge. You know, this is something that I need to go deeper into each chapter. So just kind of like getting things written out on those post-it notes inspired the book, right? Just starting and got me going. 
Okay. And then you stare at the post-its notes for how long? Well, so, okay. So you're, actually your, your situation is a little interesting. So how far did you get with the 40 challenges before you realized it was a book? Let me ask it. Let me ask that way. Right. It was probably about two months. Okay. You know, okay. I was working on this challenge and then, yeah, it just turned, it started, I started getting deeper and I was like, maybe I should like set, maybe I should explain or give some examples of someone that was in this situation or myself being in this type of situation. And, uh, and then I was like, this, this is way too much content, right? <laughs> if this is too much. It just needs to turn into the book. So, but it took two months of me looking at all the post-it notes to recognize that this is where it needed to go, which was cool. Yeah. I don't know. It's, yeah. So, so when you actually started writing the book, did, did you structure your day? So that like every day when you woke up, you wrote for an hour, did you make yourself write a thousand words two chapters? You know, what, what, how did you structure once you knew you were writing a book, how did you structure it? Um, so there wasn't any set schedule. It was, but I did decide that I was going to focus on it every single day. So okay. if that meant doing some research, if that meant um, interviewing somebody, you know, if that meant I just every single day I would focus on it. You know, there would be some days I wouldn't write for like four days, right? Straight. It was just pure research. And I was okay with that, right? I wasn't, I didn't have a deadline in the beginning at all. I didn't know that I needed to set that for myself. I learned that later on, but <laughs> yeah. it was, uh, it was just like, okay, just have fun doing this. Like my whole, you know, MO throughout this whole process was, have fun, right? Yeah. You want to do something interesting. You want to do something challenging. You want to have fun in your life. Make sure you're having fun. So I kept it light until it got to the very end. Then it right. was kind of stressful. <laughs> <laughs> was there ever a point where you're like, this is too much. I, I, I can't do it. I haven't, I haven't, I haven't done it for four days. I'm not going to go back to it. You know, I'm, uh, it's just, it's overwhelming writer's block, whatever you want to call it, but self doubt, you know, whatever you, did you ever have one of those moments as part of this? Yeah, there were a lot of those moments. Yeah. I mean, who am I to write a book on financial confidence, so, right? Yeah, who right. am I to ask these questions? Because the book, every single chapter has a series of questions. Um, yeah, there was all these sort of, they, they were silly. It was silly of me to actually feel that way. Because it's like, if you have something and you want to put it out there, you should, yeah. right? It's like, it's your value that you want to contribute to the world. So yeah, I mean, it would take me a couple of days to get over those insecurities. But um, my husband got me this fun thing. It's called Writer's Block Whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> I'm familiar with the, with the street version of that. Yeah. <laughs> right? And it was funny. It was sort of like, oh, when you get stressed out. You're like, okay. I, I was going to ask you if there's fun. anything specific you did. And you just said drink. <laughs> anything else you can think of that uh, <laughs> you did? No, that, no drinking. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, okay. All right. No. Anything else you did to push, push through the doubt or anything? Um, yeah. Lots of conversations with people. Okay. So going back, interviewing people, um, going back, speaking to people about what I'm doing and sort of getting that reassurance. So, hmm. you know, with family members, with friends and, you know, I expressed my ideas to them. And so it was, it was always positive feedback. So that encouraged me to get and move forward. And, you know, I have two daughters and uh, they were watching me this whole time. So, you know, I said I was going to write a book. So I had to that, <laughs> right? the trap, the trap of the role model. <laughs> yes. The trap of the role model. hundred percent. So yeah, that kept me focused. That's that, that's interesting. So how long did it take you from, from the time you, you wrote your hand wrote on the first sticky note? before you even knew it was going to be a book to the time you said, you know what, I'm done. It's done. Uh, you know, it, it was either joyous done or it's like, it's done. I, I, I can't do any more of it. This is as far as it's going, but either way, how long did it take kind of from the, from the first sticky note to the time it was available for someone to read? It's funny. I can't, it's exactly a year. It took exactly oh. one year. Okay. Which I don't know. I thought I, I thought I could complete it sooner. I thought it would be faster, but no, I guess, I, I needed everything to be the way that I wanted it to be. And so it took a little bit of time to get it, get it there. So how did you know? how did you know when it was done? Um, I knew when I recorded the audiobook. 
And <laughs> that's a good clue. Yeah. Okay. You know, and actually I did my final edit during the audiobook process. So I would read it out loud and I would go through oh, and yeah. edit things. Yeah, just yeah. because that's the way I work. So I need to talk. I need to talk out loud. So that really helped me. And then I knew I was done when after every chapter, this is kind of like hilarious. I would throw my hands up and scream out yes. Like, <laughs> yes. All and right. Then I was like, okay, now move on. Like I needed to have that feeling, that yes feeling. Like I like this. I'm proud of this. Yeah. yeah. So I right. waited for that. Well, it's it's come out. It's been out since February, and we're talking. We're recording this in June, so March, April, May. So four, it's been out for four months. Um, I'm looking at it. It's got nothing but five star reviews, um, which is the opposite of my books. So we're between us. We're, we're holding that medium. Um, so you know, s- since it's been out for four months, is there anything that has surprised you about having a book out there about its release, about the maybe the feedback you've gotten for it, or anything like that? Well. I've received, I, yeah, I'm very surprised. Lots of people like it. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know. And lots of people are actually reading it. Like, you know, when you talk about finances and money, a lot of people are like, "Ugh, I don't want to deal with that. Right. But um, yeah, lots of people love how simple it is. The feedback has been nothing but amazing for me. So I'm very honored. I'm very grateful that so many people are liking it. I, I don't know why I'm so surprised about that because, you know, I am proud of it. But when you hear somebody else say like, this is good, yeah. this is good. Oh, that feels so good. That it's, feels good. Nice. It, it's a funny thing. Yeah. It's a fun, it's hard to, it's hard to describe. Yeah. But um, so are you working on another book? Well, yeah, there's a plan in the future, definitely to put a few more books out there. I kind of want to keep this, you know, keys concept going. So, you know, I'm thinking maybe something for single women, right? There's going to need to be a little bit of research behind that for teenagers, for kids. So yeah, I'd like to keep writing. It was fun. You can can put out for financially destitute, depressed uh, old guys too. Right. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Right. Okay. There's all sorts of people. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So you know. So so let's say there's someone who's sitting out there like you. You know, who who um, they now have time maybe they didn't have, or or they have an idea, um, and and they think they have a book you know up here, and they want to get it out here into the world. What what advice might you have for them? Um, I know everybody says this, but it's like just start, right? Yeah. Of course, just start. But my advice would be just write something down just start writing. And then even like, just like what I did on some post-its, right. And uh, see what happens or in a journal. But I think the most important thing. So after you write things down, find an accountability buddy. So Ah, tell somebody you'd like to do this and have that somebody be a person that will hound you and come back and care and say, Hey, so are you doing this? Are you doing this? Are you doing this? Right. An accountability buddy is a good idea to have during the writing process. You'll feel guilty. You'll get things done. You know, if you, you know, if you decide on a deadline and you tell a few people, you'll be embarrassed if you don't do it. So it'll, it'll drive you. Right. I think that's, I think that's good. And you, 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 also started this by making yourself your own accountability buddy by putting the, the notes on a mirror, right? We had to see them every single day. So yeah, I think, I think, yes, yeah, a good, I think accountability and structuring it in, in a way that becomes uh, p- progressively more motivating the farther you get into it. Um, I think that's, yeah. that, that's really, really good advice. All right. Well, look, it's been a pleasure talking to you. Um, enjoy did what they call the great white North. Is that what we call that Canada? Yeah. <laughs> Something like yeah. that. Yeah, I know it's summer, so the great hot north, whatever yeah. it is. <laughs> the great rainy north. <laughs> for now, yeah. Thanks, right. David. Thanks All for right. having me. So, wonderful right. talking to you. Bye. You too. Take care. Thank you for watching. Please consider hitting the subscribe button.